Is the ultimate question. How close are we to knowing if we're alone in the universe? The scientists that might discover that answer are led by a woman who grew up here in the valley and has been a big part of ASU for decades. And now she's setting her sights past Arizona and into the stars. Steve Nielsen got a rare look inside NASA's largest lab to see how we'll try to find alien life. We're in Arizona, but Papago Park can feel otherworldly. It's got great trails, cacti, unique landscapes. But it was here a young Arizona girl first began her hunt for out of this world answers. Mars definitely has a lot in common with Arizona. I think that's one of the reasons I love it. Welcome to the Mars Yard, a small strip of dirt, rocks, hills, and challenges that mimic life on Mars. But instead of being on the red planet, it's tucked behind a garage in Pasadena. This is the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, NASA's only federally funded research and development center. Basically, anything NASA does that you think is cool, they build it here. And the person who runs it all is Dr. Lori Leshin. And she loves her job. Super creative, super nerd, so they're my people. She learned what she loved in Arizona, a Corona del Sol high grad who went to Arizona State University, eventually becoming a professor and helping launch ASU's School of Earth and Space Exploration. Now she's one of the top scientists in the world, leading one of the top space teams in the world. We are about exploring the frontiers of space for the benefit of humanity, really about discovery, about exploring new worlds out in our own solar system about looking for life elsewhere and about improving life here on Earth by understanding our own planet better. ASU is playing a large role in finding out more about our planet thanks to the Psyche mission. ASU is leading the mission that launches in October to a metal rich asteroid studying the collisions necessary to create planets. Engines full power and lift off of... It's going to launch on a Falcon Heavy rocket, which is one of the biggest rockets we launch these days, so very exciting. When it launches, a team will be here at JPL, mission control, reading data, but the researchers in this room gather a lot more than just that. All of our deep space spacecraft are talking to this room most every day. Every day we're talking to the Voyager spacecraft, which were launched almost 47 years ago and still phone home most every day. Um, and this will be the room where our psyche team will be in uh, just a couple of months time when we get the first signals down from the spacecraft after launch. So it's a really important place. It's sort of the, the beating heart of JPL. It's a historic landmark where countless missions have been celebrated and cheered, applauded, but it's not the only important place on the campus. Are we alone? That's probably the most profound question we can answer right now. Inside of this clean room, you can see a team of scientists working on what's called the Europa Clipper. This might be our next step in finally answering that question. The Europa Clipper will study the building blocks necessary for life on the far off moon. One of our biggest ambitions at JPL is to find life elsewhere. And so we are trying to explore all kinds of places in our solar system and beyond that might have life. Europa is a really interesting example of that. It's a moon of Jupiter that has an icy shell, but beneath that we think it has a global ocean. So it's an ocean world like the Earth, but it's a moon of Jupiter. Who would have thought? So Europa Clipper is all about exploring that moon and really trying to understand that ocean and whether it might be a habitable environment. It feels like this is a pivotal moment to be the director of JPL. We're talking about finding life. That's right. It's the biggest question. If you're a scientist, the biggest question you can ask is, are we alone in the universe, right? And so that is what we are trying to answer. We're on the precipice of it. Oh, my God. But is extraterrestrial life already here? A congressional hearing has sparked many questions about alien life on Earth a after a whistleblower claimed the U.S. UAP already possessed several alien spacecraft. Korea. I'll just ask you bluntly, have you seen spacecraft made from outside of this world? Absolutely not. No. Okay. Has anyone ever talked about that with you? No. Okay. <laughs> Anything else you, you make of those hearings when you hear that on Capitol Hill? I mean, look, there's clearly a lot of interest. Our interest is in actually scientifically following the evidence and, and looking for life elsewhere. And I think we have the chance within our lifetimes to answer that question. Whether it's intelligent life, that would be very interesting, obviously. But if you just look at the history of life on Earth, it stayed very, very simple for a very long time. Single-celled organisms, like the algae in your pool that we all know about in Arizona, um, things like that. Uh, 
those are, that's much more likely the, the kind of life we're going to find, especially locally. The hunt for those organisms has been a part of her story from the beginning. In 2012, she celebrated the landing of the Curiosity rover on Mars. She showed us Curiosity's twin inside the Mars Yard garage at JPL. They keep the duplicate here for testing. They're where we test um, new software updates, new commands. If there's a problem up on Mars, the first thing we do is come in here and try and recreate it. So these rovers really help us be smarter on Mars because we can't go up to Mars and fix the rovers. Her team placed essentially a small oven on the rover that later proved water is in the soil of Mars. We found a lot of water in it, sort of if you could imagine if you had sort of a cubic foot of that dirt and you heated it up just a little bit, you get like a couple of bottles of water worth of water out of it. So it's a great resource as we think about uh, potential human exploration in the future. Every inch of the rovers copied, even the tire tread that contained a hidden message. It's Morse code of the letters JP. L. Did you know about the Morse code on the wheels before the launch? <laughs> I make no comment on that. Yeah, whether NASA knew or not, it's an ongoing joke at the lab. But regardless, every rotation on Mars, JPL is written in its wake. There's a lot of pride in the work that we do here. And, you know, the fact that they think about little ways to leave our mark on Mars, I love that. Which is exactly the kind of mark Leshen hopes to leave on the space industry. A true trailblazer. Under her first year, for the first time ever, more than 30% of the employees at JPL are women. It's important for people to to see people who look like them in leadership roles. And, um, you know, when I was a little girl, my mom uh, used to go to meetings of women's organizations trying to fight for women's rights and women's equality. And I, I was so little, I didn't really understand it then. But I know that now that she was doing that so that I could do this. And this wouldn't have been possible you know, 40, 50 years ago for a woman to be in this role. And, and now it is. And that, I think, is meaningful to a lot of people, not only women. Steve Nielsen, Fox 10 News. Our look at the cosmos continues online. You can hear more from Dr. Leshen about the decade-long mission to study Mars rocks for microscopic life. We also talked to her about commercial space travel and why they're turning to the SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket for the first time when ASU's mission launches in October. It's up right now on our YouTube page at fox10phoenix.com.